Hello, my name is Chris Niebling. I'm the co-author of the video series, The Right Seat. Sitting next to me is Jim Silvernail, author of Suburban Fire Tactics, and Dave Casey, co-author of the Right Seat video series. While this video emphasizes suburban fire tactics, in reality, it works with all tactics textbooks and curriculums. And just as important, it works with fire departments of any size or locale. Each fire ground is an uncontrolled chaos, which we are expected to control and mitigate. In order to accomplish this, we must have a flexible game plan, which takes into account unique circumstances which characterize each incident. Like the Right Seat video series, this can be used as part of a formal training program or for in-service training, for mentoring, or study for promotional testing. We will introduce the scenario, the type of fire, time of day, weather, your crew and apparatus, and what units will be responding with you. Then you get to see the scenario, which is a computer simulation of fire and smoke, and we will do a 360. In some scenarios, we will show you the interior views. Then you can stop the video and determine what would you do. After that, we will gather here at the firehouse kitchen table and discuss the pertinent points and then leave you with a bullet list. Welcome to Suburban Fire Tactics from the right seat. So, what are the major differences between urban and suburban firefighting tactics? As depicted in this visual graphic, the main differences are staffing, resources, response area characteristics, such as time and distance of responding units. The objectives and strategies in the fire service are universal for any demographic, urban, suburban, and rural. However, the true challenge is tactical implementation. Unfortunately, all fire service agencies are not created equal. So what's the difference? Understanding the difference begins by assessing your agency's capabilities at the single resource level, the company. Secondly, what resources are you responding with? What is the availability of engine companies? And what are the response times, particularly of the later arriving companies? Are there true truck or ladder companies available, or do you operate on a functional SOG? In a functional SOG, assignments are assigned by arrival order or need and not assigned by the apparatus type. For example, a third arriving engine might be assigned initial truck duty, or a first due quint with a 75-foot area ladder might be assigned engine work. Finally, response area characteristics can also affect tactical implementation. For example, a suburban cul-de-sac can create numerous access issues and possibly change water supply considerations in relationship to the type of hose lay that you'll use. 